on the Senator I apologize, man. We can't hear all of this, so I thank you for coming to Stone. We are a proud city. We were four, so we would have self-correction. So instead of being in the hand of the county we would be controlling our own destiny. I think we do not take kindly to the somewhat arrogant process by which major changes to our charter have become Senate Bill 469 without, as far as anybody knows, any discussion, any meetings, anything with the citizens of Stonehenge. There may be some good things in that bill, but I myself do not appreciate the way it seems to be being shoved down our craw from people in the state capital. Senator, we don't like it. Um, the idea is a charter commission that is specified that has to happen in five years, charter people in the city of Florida. If you had wanted to push that up, so it had to be formed this year, if you had wanted to specify that the Charter of the Commission has to look at our form of government, I think that would be fine. I would personally be happy with that. I think it should be looked at. Apparently, you three have looked at it and made your decision. The things that get shoved down people's throat. All speaking of that. Would you like to make this not to us? Of course. Yes. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yes. Yes. I promise I'm not going to leave you First of all, Senate Bill 469 has been introduced. It is yeah. not passed. It's still sitting in the, it is not going through the committee yet. That bill is a demanding bill somewhere over in the House because the House is putting together their bills as it deals with the charter changes. As a matter of fact, I got one of was uh, emailed to me today. What we do as legislators is that we work on legislation in the Senate, we work on legislation in the House. It requires both chambers to approve any legislation. And that's where the art of compromise comes from. So whatever we, our end product will be in the Senate, whatever their end product will be over in the House, somewhere between the two, we will have a conference committee and we'll work out and work out the final details of the bill. Once we are able to get whatever that final version is of the bill, then that final version will be discussed with the public. So right now, I cannot tell you what the final version of the bill is. And I'm glad to hear that, but I wish you would compromise because first and before you drafted this rather only, maybe not all bad, Senator Chambers. The way this has happened is difficult to us, and I do not like that.
a $1.8 billion a year. That's money that we can get per year for the next 10 years. That's a big hit for us. Our, our return rate in 2010 was 72%. We lost over $275 million. We have to be on top of this. It's very crucial. A lot of you talk about streets, talk about transportation. You talk about all the key things. I was at Washington, we talked to Ben Carson, our secretary of Hood. Your housing information and what you're facing in your community is impacted by a hood. That's why I see a lot of folks standing in the state hotels. In the 70s, you never heard of someone standing in the state hotels because the federal government has cut affordable housing almost to nil where people have to choose between on the streets or living in extended state hotels or wherever they can live. That's why it's important for us to fill out our census and be a part of it. And I commend you all, Mr. Don Chris, what you're doing. Push the bar, we the door bill, but we will be at South Decat Mall on this Saturday from 11 to 3, and we're going to highlight all the services that are provided by uh, the census. So if you got time, Please come on by. It was a Buford Highway a door built two Saturdays ago. And then we're going to keep, we will be also on the, uh, I forgot what day it was, but we also will be back in Latonia. We're working with our school system to do something like Latonia High School because they're going to have a school fair at the same time. So we just need your support. We need you to be part of it. They talked about Medicaid. All of us pay for the jail over there at 285. Do you know probably about 60% of the people in our jail have a mental health and substance abuse problem? They should not be in our jail. Do you know that the federal government, once you are arrested and put in our jail, you can you're sit there an inmate. You're not a prison in jail. You haven't been convicted of anything. You know you lose your Medicaid benefits right now. If you're a veteran and you go to jail, just a county jail, you lose your, vet, your, your uh, veteran benefits. Do you know if you're a young person, and you go to juvenile and you're in our jail. You know you use your CHIP benefits, that's your child health and insurance benefits. So we have to make sure at all levels that we protect folks because if you lose your benefits, guess what happens if you come out of jail? You start all over and if you have a mental health issue, guess what's going to happen? You're more likely, most likely to do what? You're going to go back because you have no more therapists, you have no more medication, you might have no more primary care. So folks, this impacts all of us in this room. So please, you all, 10 minutes, 10 questions. Got some giveaways we'll pass out back here. Commissioner Rita Davis Johnson has helped because she helped fund me. I'm the chair of the board of the Complete Count Committee. Uh, we heard from, our, uh, from just a whole host of people, but we must make sure your civic duty is to fill this out. This is the only thing that's one of the things that required in our Constitution that was passed to fill out our census. So, can I count on you all? Yes, you can. Can I count on you all? Yes, you can. Yes, Stone Chris, Mr. Yes, Mayor, we have 100% city. We need 100%. Mm -hmm. And so we're challenging our churches to be 100%. We're challenging our neighborhood. If you got an HOA, you all want your HOA to be 100% HOA. We've got churches now putting on their digital signs. So if you got a church, you belong to a church, you got a business, put this on their sign and remind people that we need to be, have everybody counted. And you see down here, the cap counts 2020.org, the cap counts 2020.org. Thank you, Senators, for allowing me to speak. Uh, your Senator Tanya Anderson is on the Complete, complete Count Committee. And so, uh, just for your efforts and for what you all have done to help to move the ball, because they have not, at the federal level, they still have not hired the outreach workers. You know how people apply for the jobs? You make it $22 an hour, you get paid every week, and you get benefits. But there has not been one person hired, so what DeKalb County has had to do, we've had to extend our outreach team till June. And we're about to go on iHeart Radio, we're about to go on all the radio stations that iHeart is in, because we want to make sure as a county that everybody is counted. So we don't get anything right. I know we're about to get distracted because the elections are coming up. But please, you all, have these folks to them out. Because everything is dependent on your city. This is the city of Stonecrest. This is your first census officially. And you want to have the maximum.
maximize the funds that are available to you. We talk about infant mortality. If only uh, you got 10,000 people who need the, the program on infant mortality, but only 1,000 people fill it out, guess how much money you're going to get? You're only going to get it for 1,000 people. But, but 9,000 people are not going to get it, but they're going to need the program. And guess what's going to happen? If they don't pay for the federal level, guess who pays for it? The county and the cities, and guess what? More kids are now dying that don't have to die because they didn't have prenatal services. And this prenatal program is not based on income because the race in our higher income African American community is worse than the race in Dunwoody. And we only about 10 minutes apart from each other, 15 minutes apart. That's a travesty in a country, a world class health a country that has the best health care in the world. And you got people dying, young people because we don't have the services. So thank you, Senator Butler, for bringing that up. Thank you. Yes, ma'am? Yes. Um, Senator Butler. You said that you um, were offended when you found out about the uh, bill. Was it yesterday or today? You had, you got, you had no uh, input on it? Okay. Okay, you didn't have any information. We at Stone Press are offended that we were not, uh, we had no input on Bill 469 that our rights, you know, we voted for how we wanted our city to be, but you and other senators decided to take it upon yourselves to change our charter without consulting us. So we're offended just like you are offended without someone notifying you about the bill. So my question is, why, why, why did you guys make these, these changes without consulting citizens? You didn't give us a survey. You didn't put anything on the next door. You didn't send anything by mail. You're doing the changes without asking us. What you vote it for? Do you want to continue or do you want you three to make these changes? That's my question. Let me give you the same answer that I gave to the previous gentle person that left. We have introduced legislation in the Senate. Legislation has been introduced in the House. It is incumbent on us, like we do in our public meetings every single week, to discuss legislation which is open to the public, it's only open to the press. The House does the same thing. They have meetings that is open to the public, open to the press. We discuss legislation that we introduce. And as it pertains to Senate Bill 469 or any other bill, there's always a conference committee, a reconciliation process between bills that we introduce in the Senate and bills that are introduced in the House. I have introduced this year about seven bills. Of those bills that I've introduced, they pertain to everything from the press to Department of Education, Department of Agriculture, and on and on and on. Those same bills that I've introduced are heard in the committee, which is a committee that's open to the public. That's the first step. Then that same bill goes to the Rules Committee and heard in the Rules Committee. Then that same bill is then heard on the floor. And then the process starts all over again in the House of Representatives. So all along the way, with any bill that we introduce, General bill, local bill, it doesn't really matter. There's multiple avenues for constituents like yourself to weigh in on. So we don't break bills in the back. We don't pass bills in the back. We don't pass bills ourselves. Anything that pertains to Stone Press, it takes the members of the delegation in the Senate, it takes all the members of the delegation in the House to pass that local legislation. So I hope you understand that the questions that you're asking. What's the justification? We don't we, we understand that there's a process that you go through. We want to know what is the justification for you making that decision for us. Wow, the are so considered in the first place is already in the charter. So I have a question. How many people were in the initial um well, uh, portion of meeting when the charter was being put together. Two, three, four. Okay. How many people are familiar with the legislation that was 
was passed um, by a chamber of the House and the Senate two years ago. Change of the charge. One, two people. There, there's a man. Excuse me? Are you talking about the one where it's at? No, I'm talking about all the bills that's been submitted in the chamber, both the House and the Senate. That bill originated two years ago in the House. So those bills that were originated in the chamber, all the bills pertain to different cities, and there was bills that the bills that introduced at the same time. Sir, please address this man's question. My, my question was just, what's the justification? I'm sure that there's, I know that there's a process, I'm, I'm okay with that part, but what's the justification for you even submitting the bill in the first place? Yes, sir. Let, let me just tell you. Yes. As it pertains to Stonecrest, or any other city that I represent, if there's issues that's raised by any of the constituents regarding the functionality, the governance, the management, of any city or any municipality that we represent, when issues are brought to us by our constituents, we have back and forth. So you're As a matter of fact, uh, I believe that your mayor mentioned when he found uh, the CPO that that issue was brought up by a constituent. The mayor is representing his constituents no different than we represent ours. So you're saying that a constituent made a request to put this in? So we no, can, I'm we not can, saying that constituent. I'm saying multiple constituents. So, so constituent. we can request that. We can figure out what, what uh, that, there, that there actually was. Like there's a process for us to figure out who made this request. That there actually was a request. I, I, I know with the city there's an open records request, so I can go through. You ask the question, I can Okay. All right. Next. Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay. Um, I wanted to acknowledge that there have been members of the community who have spoken both to our state representatives as well as our city council members about some of the very changes that have been proposed in this charter change. So while there is opposition to it, it is not out of the blue. There have been people for two years since the creation of this city who have specifically asked for and advocated for specific changes that are in this. I did not personally have a conversation with any senator about it, but I know that the Stone Press Citizens Coalition put forth a policy agenda a year and a half ago that we publicized that has a lot of these recommended changes within it. I've had conversations with council members. I know that council members have had conversations with other members of the public and have had conversations with our state representatives. I am making a statement just like other people have repeatedly made statements. So individuals who did not have the benefit of having created the charter and created the city now would like to have a say in how the city is structured going forward. So my question to us, to you, is what process would you recommend for the citizens to be able to have further input as this bill moves through the process? Thank you. Well, thank you for that question, by the way. Part of, uh, part of what you citizens have to do is to do exactly what all of you are doing this morning. We're making the forces now. So we encourage that. As these bills make their way through the committee, certainly I would encourage you to follow these bills and track these bills. If you have any questions about anything that I've worked on, I always make myself available to constituents. I can give you my number, 404-656-0502. 404-656-0502. That is my Senate office number. My Senate email is Emmanuel.Jones at Senate.GA.GOV. Emmanuel, E M A N U E L, by Jones at Senate.GA.GOV. So there's multiple ways to reach out and make sure your voice is heard. 
I listen to everybody, and my job is to represent any city. My job is also to listen to the constituents that they have the stone crest because those constituents are our constituents. The reason why the three of us are here is because each one of us represents some portion of that city. That's what makes us the delegation members of the city of Stonecrest or any other city within our district. The same is true for the House of Representatives. There are six members in the House of Representatives that represent any part of Stonecrest. So the same process that you have in terms of reaching out and communicating with us, I would encourage you to use the same process and reach out and communicate and make sure your voice is heard with members of the House of Representatives as well. And if you need any assistance with finding out who the House members are that represent those areas, I think there's six of them, right? You know, Representative Noreen Carter. And I'm, I'm right here. He's over here. Yeah. Representative Vernon Jones, Representative Sean Kendridge, Representative Pam Stevens, Representative Karen Bennett, and I know I'm missing one. And Representative Viola Davis. Those are the six members in the House of Representatives. And the three of us in the Senate. Let me also add one thing. Uh, when we start local legislation, we require city council to send us a resolution saying they want us to open up their job. So I have a resolution that was signed by four members of the city council to start the press that says we want the Senate to make the well, legislature, I hate to say the Senate, by the way, because, sorry, Representative Biden, we're going to be equal building with us in the Senate. Right, yes. We want the legislature to make those changes in the charter. So that resolution that they sent to us triggers a lot of what we do. Those city council members that represent Stonecrest are a lot closer to all of the constituents in Stonecrest than any of us are. That's why we have multiple levels of representing the government. There's no resolution. There's I'm uh, sorry. Council, turn it over there and I'm over here. There's no resolution that we submit. The resolution I want to address one more thing. I didn't know that part of the Stone Press was in my district because no one ever came to talk to me about it. Excuse me? Maybe I didn't go. Because I didn't go. As a rule, I don't focus. So, you know, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about the creation of stone bread, period. When it was first created, no one, no one came to talk to me about part of my district being in stone bread. No one. No, I, I can't no one let somebody come talk to me. So, but you're our No, it doesn't work that way. I don't go and seek out you don't go and legislation to know about. We have thousands of bills from the House and the Senate. So I can't see every bill that comes by. So I, I was on the government commission, and we talked about creating the city of Stonecrest for almost five years. That may be true. Before, before it passed. So you as our representative, that may be true. You as our representative, but that's not what I'm talking about. I said no one talk. came and talked with me. You don't have to. Listen, you work for us. You work for us. So if we want to create a city, and you know about, but I should be treated fairly, just like you want to be treated. It doesn't behoove me. I, I have you though. Right. You right. <laughs> so what you have? I don't know. Where do you live? I live in But you may not live in my district. Oh, yes, you do. I do. At the time that I, I was elected, in my house. you probably did not vote for me. I lived in my house for over 17 years. Did you vote for me? I'm, I'm sure I did at least once. Does it matter? At least once. But my point is. I think you missed my point. No, I, you didn't let me make mine because you didn't correct me. All I'm saying to you is that as legislators, you're elected officials. It's, it doesn't behoove us to come to you and say, this is what we want to do. You should be aware. It was in the newspaper. It was in the media. We, we are here now. 
we we up here to have a conversation, not to shout back and forth. All I'm saying is, all and, I'm saying is, this. we heard you. No, you we did heard you. And when you he, have finished he enough. Said, and let me tell you, we are not here to have a conversation. We are not here to have a conversation. So I appreciate everybody for being here tonight. Our Population. I'm, I'm literally the only person in my third that's 30 years old here. Would you like to hear from somebody? Uh, hello. I'm, 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 I'm,